All right, you guys. Welcome. Welcome. You are listening to the very first episode of Unapologetic with Donovan Sadiq. And we're just going to sit here and talk about a few things. It's uh, July 18th, 2020. It's about six o'clock. Again, you guys can uh, check out this uh, podcast on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and they are all archived on YouTube. So just look me up. You'll see the, uh, look my name up. You'll see the podcast there. You can go there and uh, see all the work that I've been doing for the last couple of years. It's it's been a, a interesting ride, very interesting ride. Hot, 96 degrees out here. I live in uh, Southern California. I live in the desert near Riverside, California. 96 degrees, dry heat though. There's a big difference, dry heat. Those of you guys in the South and live in Hawaii and in these tropical environments where there's a lot of plant life, where there's a lot of humidity, totally different, totally different situation. Uh, you know, we can breathe out here. I mean, you know, I've lived in a tropical situation on the island of Okinawa, Japan, and humidity there would get to 80 degrees because, you know, you're dealing with a very tropical island. So it's, it's really, really uh, interesting. But uh, I said I was going to uh, start this podcast. And, and by the way, you can, be, you can also catch this out on Speaker, Spreaker. I use Spreaker as my uh, podcast platform, and it sends this out on all of the platforms. So if you have a Google Home, just put in Donovan Sadiq. If you know the particular episode, just say what the episode is and your Google Home should pop up, your Amazon Alexis, whatever you've got, it should be able to uh, pop it up. And, you know, don't forget to like and share this as well. So we're going to talk about, uh, and I know you guys have been uh, reading or if you're sitting in traffic and you're listening to my voice right now, You guys have heard about a lot of things happening in the United States in regards to black people. Now, Joe the Bigot Biden. Oh, and by the way, uh, before I forget, uh, Congressman John Lewis passed away yesterday. And um, rest in peace, Congressman Lewis. You did the best you could. And I'm going to leave it at that because I'm not going to sit up here and be hypocritical, but I am definitely going to be respectful. Um, I'm not a big fan of John Lewis. I'm not a big fan of the uh, nonviolent movement. I am more of a uh, Nation of Islam follower, Black Panther follower. Um, These people that we are dealing with here in 2020 do not care if you're going to be nonviolent with them. And I've said this on several podcasts. I'm a military man. I've lived, you know, I, I, I was born into the military. 24 years of service in the military. And we don't want you to arm yourselves because it makes it that much harder for us when you are armed. And we don't have to listen to you because we have all the power. So, you know, 60 years since the Civil Rights Movement and we haven't moved one iota. And, you know, I kind of sit back and I look at all these civil rights icons. And John Lewis was an icon. I'm not going to take any of that from him. And all of these people who fought the system and, you know, they gained these crumbs off the plate of massa. And they're proud of themselves, you know. But here's the thing. Well, here's what I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But I just can't. I don't understand. You fought the system, and then in the end, you joined the system. You know, all these accolades they're giving to John Lewis about his civil rights accomplishments, which, by the way, if you really look at his history, he was with the SCLC, which was a um, thing that Martin Luther King had formed, and then he moved on to another organization. He went more national. And John Lewis was kicked out by Stokely Carmichael. They don't talk about that. You know, there was a a, a shift or something. He was kicked out. And then next thing you know, he pops up and he's running for Congress and he joins the very system that he's trying to fight. But they're giving him all these accolades. But, you know, one thing I noticed about John Lewis and these tributes that he rightly deserves 
like I said, you know, and, and of course there's going to be somebody saying, oh, you're just running John Lewis down. You're always running John Lewis down. You look at you. Listen to what I'm saying. He deserves these accolades. He's an icon. I get it. But notice, he, he, won, con, he won a congressional seat in 1984 or 1986, around that time, if I remember right. Notice they are not saying anything about his congressional record. Am I the only one that noticed that? They're not saying a damn thing of any of his congressional accomplishments. He was the conscious of the Congress. Okay. While he was in Congress, all of those years, what did he accomplish? They don't mention it. And this is why I'm doing unapologetic. I don't care if you like it. I don't care if you do like it. Do or don't. I'm going to going to come at you with a different perspective. Yes, he did the best he could. And I don't blame any baby boomers. They were doing what they thought was the right thing to do. But you're dealing with a totally different group of people now. Nonviolence does not work. We've tried it for 60 years being nonviolent. And these white people don't seem to get the point. So we're going to go in a different direction as black people. And that's my point with all of this. Okay? So the, the topic today is Joe the bigot Biden. And everybody says, why are you always on Joe Biden? I've said this many times before, and I'm going to keep saying it. What has Joe Biden promised black people for the vote that we are going to give him to get him into the White House. You know, I think it's an insult when a presidential candidate sits in my fucking face and tells me the first thing that he is going to do is he's going to do DACA. He's going to do Dreamers. He's going to do LGBTQ. Are these the people and the votes that he needs to become president? Remember, listen to what this man is saying. He said he's for the status quo. He doesn't want things to change. Status quo means nothing changing. You know, so if the status quo is what he's aiming for, you know, if you're a rich white person, that's great for you. If you're LGBTQ, that's great for you. All the gains you're making. But if you're catching hell like me and my people, that's not so good. So why would I give him my vote? But, you know, our, these baby boomers, oh, we got to get Trump out of there. Please tell me what is the difference between one bigot and another bigot? This man constantly brags about how he was friends with Strom Thurmond and the Dixiecrats. I mean, he's telling you who he is. And that's the, the, the trick of the Democratic Party. They have mastered, mastered masterfully how to make black people vote against their own interests. Amazing. I, you know, you know I, I, I just sit and I just say, wow, this man who was the author of the crime bill, and I put a video up. So if you guys go to my Facebook page or go to my YouTube page, Donovan Sadiq is my name. And I put a video up where Joe Biden is bragging about the legislation that he drafted, that he called and told everybody else to call. Biden's law. That's the crime bill. It wasn't hard enough. He even brags that he, in the 80s, proposed the Patriot Act before the Patriot Act that we know of right now. Curbing your civil liberties. Does this sound like a 
Democrat that's for the people, he sounds more conservative. But if you ask Joe Biden about his former stances, oh, well, you know, I, I, you know, I, yeah, I wrote the bill, but I didn't really write the bill. It was other senators and pastors, and I got input from all of these people. Now he runs away from it. But if you go to the video that I showed, it showed him just, just smiling and bragging. And, you know, he's not concerned because for him, this is great because he doesn't have to go outside. He doesn't have to be seen because we, because we know he puts his foot in his mouth. And he doesn't have to promise us anything because he knows he has the black vote automatically. The baby boomers are going to vote for him. Right? They got theirs, you know, affirmative action, everything that was for them. And I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and they said, why are you so always dogging out the baby boomers? That's your parents, people, you know, generation. I said, yeah, but, you know, I have to call, call it what it is. And here's what I mean by that. The baby boomers talk about Social Security. They fight so freaking hard about the government not touching their Social Security. If it's not right for the government to touch your Social Security, why is it right for the government to touch my Social Security and any generation after me? That's why I talk about the baby boomers. Here in California, we have a Cal Peer system. So if you work for the California state government, you know, in a state municipality, they have made the rule to where some of these people can retire and get up to 80 to 100% of their pay as if they're still working after they retire. But then anybody after them gets 40%, gets 30%. They change the rules to benefit themselves, not worrying about anybody behind them. So, so when people ask me, why do I criticize the baby boomers? Well, shouldn't I? Shouldn't I criticize a person that is uh, calling me a cripple, but they're the ones that, that broke my uh, arm and broke my legs? Why can't you guys get a job? Why can't you guys do this? Why can't you guys do that? Well, you keep changing the rules of the game. I'm trying to play the game. But I'm the bad guy. Joe Biden has this thing called lift every voice. I mean, we black people, we fall for the symbolism and it, it's just incredible how if you actually have read, like I said, a lot of black people don't read. There's an old saying, if you want to keep something from a black person, put it in a book. That's a true statement. It's a very true statement. I, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to say that very few of us read. They'd rather go with the soundbite. Lift Every Voice does nothing for black people. But notice how he uses symbolism of what that means to the black community to get the non-readers and the outright ignorant to support him. Like, that's going to do something. You guys have heard about Asheville, North Carolina has come out with a reparations thing. And I tell people all the time, whenever the media highlights reparations, be very careful in what you see and what you read. Now, I read the statement on the reparations. Symbolism. Symbolism. The biggest thing in there, they said, was they are going to invest in the black community. More investment. More access to capital. Right now, come on, guys, we're in 2020. What does investment in black neighborhoods mean? So for all of you people around in New York, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, Houston, all these major cities, Chicago, what does investment in the black community mean in 2020? Can I give you a hint? 
Have you guys heard of the word gentrification? That's what investment means in the modern term. They're going to invest in the black community. Well, if you invest in the black community, that means the people with money are going to start buying property. And I can tell you living here in Southern California, they gentrified South Central Los Angeles. If you go to Compton, California, yes, that Compton of NWA fame in the 90s, you know, the CIA crack cocaine epidemic, that Compton, that Watts, that Inglewood, that area, million dollar area now, million dollar. They gentrified that area and moved those Negroes out quicker than you can say, get the fuck out. And those Negroes sold their properties for little or nothing to to the dollar. These people were sitting on million dollar properties and they and they sold their properties for three hundred and fifty thousand dollars and moved where I live. I live 60 miles east of Los Angeles. And now these Negroes are about to lose those homes because, you know, uh, what happens when, you know, yeah, we, we, we buy the home, whatever, and there's no there's really no jobs out here. So now you've moved farther from your job and you just got a new house. So you got a little money. So you buy some furniture to go in the house. Of course, you don't have any kids or any uh, body able to maintain the house. So now the shingles are falling off. Now, I personally live in a house that was built in 1980. That was the last year of the way houses were built to that code. Now, back in 1980, they had a, a, a few like Ace Hardware was always around and you had this place called Builders Emporium, which was kind of fairly new. Went out of business. But when they started building these new homes, that's when you saw the Home Depot and the Lowe's. Why is Home Depot and Lowe's so popular even today? Because people, they're going to they're gonna build homes. These homes, these newer homes are designed to fall apart within five years. Every time I have the cable guy or somebody uh, come in for a job that I can't do myself and they go through my loft or, you know, they, you know, we, we go through the wall. The first thing that they say is, hey, is that wood? And I'm like, yeah, it's a wood framed house. Wow. Because a lot of homes nowadays are made with particle board and particle wood. They're not like real things. So. A house, especially here in Southern California, you could build a house with eighty thousand dollars worth of uh, worth of material, and they're going to sell it for three eighty four twenty, which is ridiculous to me that you're going to pay that kind of amount of money. But people do. So these Negroes are gentrified out of L.A., and you will see right now in twenty twenty where the new stadium is being built for the Rams and the Chargers. Uh, black uh, white people walking around in Compton with their Starbucks and their, you know, whatever, Chick-fil-A's and all that other stuff. That's what investing in the black community means. Now, a lot of people don't understand what reparations is, okay? So if you look at the uh, statement that Asheville wants to do, more access to capital, that means you would have to go to a bank, okay? I don't care what kind of access you got to have to the bank, you got to have collateral. People, we are less, because of this COVID, before we were 12 years away from zero wealth. Now the COVID has hit and a lot of you guys have lost your jobs. So we're actually less than 12 years away to zero wealth. This has impacted the black community tremendously. And let me tell you something about this COVID. All these white people, Uncle Buck and... Uh, Aunt Stacy and Grandpa Will on, on the white side that are, that are dying. Yeah, they're dying of the COVID because COVID is real. And you look at all these ignorant white folks out here, these big Trump supporters, the, <laughs> the Trump supporters. I don't need no mask. Yeah, COVID is real. They're dying. But what are they dying with? Life insurance. They're leaving a legacy of wealth. 
So you've got these white families. Yeah, they're losing their loved ones, but they're also cashing in at the bank. The majority of us, when we die, either we don't claim the body or we start the GoFundMe, the car washes, or, you know, we go, you know, asking family members to help out. We better wake up. This is it for us. If we can't come out of this as black people better than when we came into it. And I mean better, not necessarily having money because they don't want to give us the money. And I'll get back to the reparations thing in a minute. But I'm talking about in our mental state of where we are at, the reality of the situation. I was at Walmart and I saw these shoes and, and they're Walmart brand shoes. No names, whatever you call them. And it's a new design. Went and got them. I said, wow, this is pretty neat. $9. $9 shoes. But I compared them against the Nikes. They looked exactly the same. Of course, the logo is different, you know, where it's placed, but it's exactly the, it, it's the exact same shoe. The Nike shoe was $56. We have to stop doing what we've done and start doing what we need to do. 1.73 trillion dollars comes through the black community every year. And we have nothing to show for it. Everything is based on us. What we do is what is hot. That's what these uh, companies cater to. If the black person says it's hot, that's what's going to sell. Everything is catered to us. And how do you know what I'm saying is true? When Eminem, a white boy, could come into the rap game and dominate it, what does that tell you? So back to the reparations. So Asheville says they're going to do all these things. They're going to get more investment, more capital. You can't go into a bank if you don't have collateral. Most of us are renters. Most of us are renters. Most of our wealth in the black community is in these piece of ass cars we own. Some of these cars uh, we got $5,000 rims on them, but the car is worth about $300. That's how stupid we are. And that's what's going down. So how is that going to help black people? To invest in a community, who can invest? We don't even have money to invest in our own communities. See what I'm saying? That's where the gentrification comes in. But you got these baby boomers and these handkerchief head, ignorant Negroes talking about, yeah, reparations. That's not reparations. Reparations is cash money only. It can't be any other thing. If they say reparations is we're going to give you free education, I'm ADOS, an American descendant of a slave. Five generations. Well, in my case, four generations. I can trace it back four generations. My grandfather is still alive today, and he was born in about 1926 or something like that. So that means that his grandfather was a slave. Four generations. Don't let these white, ignorant people tell you, well, it's impossible for you to uh, really you know, get to know, uh, you know who's a slave and who's not. Bullshit. It's not 10 generations. That, that goes to show you how crazy these people are and how bad their math is. You're talking about four generations. If you can trace your family here to 1870, and the reason that I say 1870 is, remember, the Civil War was over for a couple of years before the people down in Galveston, Texas, even knew they were free. Okay? So I'm saying 1870. So you have ADOS here. 13% of black people make up the population of the United States. And it's been that way for about 60 years. We are not procreating. Why? Homosexuality, 
uh, uh, jail, uh, murders, wars, death, whatever. You, you put all those things in disease, all those things into it. Our population is very stagnant. In the 1970s, Asians were uh, uh, about 2% of the population. Right now, Asians are about 8% of the population. Hispanics are, they're on the march. Latinos are on the march. They are fucking with no regard. I look at some of these young girls and I'm thinking, this girl's not even 22 years old and she has three children already. And another one on the way. Okay? The black people were very stagnant. But out of that 13%, Eight of eight percent of that is ADOS. So there is no astronomical number. Just because you have a black skin doesn't mean you're going to get a check. This is why those Africans and those Caribbeans people that have migrated here, you're convoluting the issue and giving these white people an excuse to say why they can't give us reparations. It's impossible to know who's who and who. And then you folks think that you deserve reparations because you experience the same racism that we experience. I'm not saying you don't. You do experience the same racism. But you're not ADOS. Your slavery is not American slavery, if that's what you're claiming. So if I'm from Nigeria, I'm going to address the treatment, or better yet, the Congo. Have you guys ever read what happened in the Congo under the Belgians? Oh my God, they were cutting off hands and just, it was, it, it was terrible. Terrible. But they need to address that with the Belgians. Now, listen to me before you get upset. If the United States government wants to give you a check, I'm not against that. But my point is, you guys are convoluting the conversation by putting yourself in it. Okay? We live in the same community, whatever. Let me get my $400,000 down payment and my $20,000 a month for 25 to 30 years, and I'll invest in your business, my Jamaican brother. I'll invest. But if I ain't got the money, I can't invest. And I'm not getting the money because you keep putting yourself in in the conversation. Now, if you are from the Congo, the former Zaire, former Congo, before that, okay? And you migrated to the United States. Should I get a check? If the Belgians are giving you reparations, should I get a check? Of course not. I don't have any address with the, the Belgians. I have no address with them. But if the Belgians want to give me a check, you shouldn't be against it. And that's the analogy that I'm using. If the United States wants to give you a check, hey, I'm I'm not going to stop them. Because I want my check. I'm worried about me getting my money. But you guys are preventing us from getting our money because you're trying to put yourself in the equation with your handout. You need to address your issue with Britain or Spain or whoever colonized your country. And enslaved you, okay? And I got some ignorant white friends that are, you know, that are saying, well, you know, you know, there was a white slavery and other people were enslaved here in the United States. My question to that and my answer to that is name them. And of course, the first thing that comes out of their mouth is the Irish. The Irish were not enslaved here in the United States. And I always ask them, well, why isn't that in the history books? That would even give you guys more fire to say, see, we're all in this together. The Irish were treated very badly by Britain, so they need to get their reparations from England. Okay? As a matter of fact, most Irish people, malarkey, my brother, were taskmasters on slave plantations, if we want to be historically correct. So, the Irish that you keep talking about me, brother, helped perpetrate slavery in the United States. And I'm not saying all of them. Let's look at the 
thing of Roots. Let's look at the miniseries Roots, 1977. Who was the taskmaster portrayed in the movie Roots when Kunta Kinte initially came to Virginia? It was an Irish man. Involuntary servitude, and I'm sorry, not involuntary, voluntary servitude, but there was involuntary servitude, but a lot of parents put their kids in involuntary servitude so they can learn a trade. Okay, that's involuntary servitude. Their parents willfully signed them in to work for somebody so many years so that they can learn something and then they will be freed. That's not slavery. It's not the same thing. But nice try, my white friends. Nice fucking try. And that's what kills me. It's like, okay. And then when I kept asking my friend, well, he isn't really my friend. He's just somebody that comes on my pages. I said, name it. Give me a source. Where should I look? Well, you got to look for yourself. Fuck you. Fuck you. Why should I look? You're the one citing what you're saying. I don't have to cite anything because universally, the only slaves in the United States were black. And everybody knows that. That's a fact. Then he comes up with, uh, well, you know, I'm an Indian. And, you know, the Indians were treated very badly. The Indians are still a nation. They still have their traditions. Were they treated very badly? Absolutely. But they, but they have standing treaties with the United States. Matter of fact, recently the Supreme Court, last week, ruled that half of Oklahoma is Indian territory. How does that work, white man? So all of those cities and military bases that were built in Indian territory are now subjected to being kicked out of there or being paid for. So you can't, you're, you're, they're juggling and they're trying very badly to to juggle apples and oranges. Okay. Reparations is nothing more than money. I'm an educated black man and say, okay, so let's say they say, yes, we're going to give you guys money or we're going to give you guys free education. I can't benefit from that because I'm already educated. You can't regulate me to go get an education. So that's not, so that's not reparations. When the money was given to the Japanese, did they give them beans? Did they give them horses? Did they give them housing? Did they give them land? No, they gave them money. No questions asked, no study, none of that, okay? Reparations is nothing more than a monetary compensation of one group's wrong done to another group. Could be nothing more than that. Do not fall for the okie doke. It's as simple as that. Oh, well, what's the number? Robert Johnson who was the founder of BET, he came up with a number, okay, which is fairly close. It was $14 trillion one-time payment. I'll take the $14 trillion if that's the number, but it ain't a one-time payment. No, 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 no. We're undercutting ourselves, okay? But he's close. The actual number is $17 trillion with $3 trillion paid annually for 25 to 30 years. To ADOS, 8% of black people. So you're talking about less than 20 million black people are going to be paid reparations. That can prove, well, it's impossible to do it. Slaves were a transaction. They were property. All of this information, all of this information is in the National Archives. And then some property was insured. So you've got those records. It is not as hard as they keep telling you it is. The the government recently, COVID, went down. Trillions of dollars were just given out to people who already have money. Do you guys realize the average white family in 2020 annual wealth is $177,000? The annual black family is $14,000 or less. 
and we're talking families, mother, father, two kids, the average family. That's how they averaged it. This is by the government statistic. Now, we know 70% of black women are not married. 70% of white women are married. So, and I'm not saying that to be derogatory or throw things in people's faces. I'm trying to show you how they manipulate the numbers. We know that when you have that kind of uh, number of women that are not married, majority of them are not making 14,000. They're living way below the poverty level. That's my basic point. Okay, that's the reality of the situation. Why the hell would you give money to people who already have it to keep the wealth gap the way it is? That made no sense. But they had no problem giving trillions of dollars. There was no study done. Trillions of dollars went to the corporations. No questions asked. Let me tell you guys something. And you guys better listen to me and listen to me very carefully. Rich people do not believe in capitalism. Rich people believe in socialism. That's what they believe in. Notice that every time they're in trouble, their hand is out. They want us to bail them out. But they want us to deal with the brutal capitalistic system that says you just asked out, you're asked out. The Democratic Party that is supposed to be for the working man All of these people are out of work. White, black, Asian, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Why are they not doing more to ensure that you could make your mortgage payment? You could make your car payment. Right here in Southern California, I've seen so many repos happening. In about a month and a half, foreclosures are going to start to hit. Then what? Your credit is already ruined because you've missed your payments. Do you think the bank cares that there's been a COVID thing and going on? The government didn't do anything to change that regulation. But these are the Democrats. These are the Republicans. One party, the ruling party. These these two parties, there's no difference. They're all the same. They want Donald Trump out of there because he's exposing how they do business and the corruption of it. He's not playing by the rules because the man is ignorant. That's how stupid Donald Trump is. As long as he's willing to sign tax cuts for the rich, they don't have a problem with him. But he's kind of going over a little bit overboard to where people are saying, man, this guy is so corrupt. We can't even endure the stink. Because he's doing it in your face. Back in the day, it's like when we were growing up, drugs have always been in communities. It's always been in communities. But see, when I was coming up, the parents did it in the back room. They didn't do it in front of the kids like the kids are doing now. You had a little respect for the kids. Like, okay, let me go do my shit over here. See what I'm saying? Donald Trump is like, nah, fuck it. Hey, you know, hey, well, you know, I ain't going back there to do that. No backyard deal. I'll just be corrupt right in front of you. And that's what they don't like because they know it pisses us off. So everybody, reparations can be nothing more than a monetary money because not all of us want to go to college. Oh, but if you give them the money, they're just going to waste it anyway. Well, then if you know that, you better get your business up and running and get ready to make a couple millions of dollars. So what? But America has to address that. But here we are supporting a bigot that isn't doing anything for our vote and in your face is telling you, I'm going to do this for the Mexicans. I'm going to do this for the dreamers. I'm going to do this for the gays. But I ain't doing shit for you black people, but giving you a dollar and a dream. That's what he's saying. Tell me I'm wrong. Nah, fuck you. I'm not wrong. Fuck you. That's where we're at, people. You guys better wake up. This is it. This is it. You you guys didn't learn anything from 2007. 
you make a little bit of money, you go run out, you get a Mercedes and BMW. What the hell is wrong with a, a Toyota Camry? Toyota Camry and a Lexus. They come off the same exact assembly line. They're almost the exact same vehicle. But you rather pay $20,000 more because of the symbol. You dumb fuck. Black people, we better wake up because this is it. This is our wake up call. And you got a lot of people out here doing the work. You know, I look on Facebook, uh, George Floyd was murdered on TV and you still got niggas out here buck dancing. Hoes on Instagram looking at themselves and, you know, giving the Asian uh, ladies all that money for all that weave in their head. Ladies, love yourself. You're beautiful the way you are. You started civilization. Where's your fucking pride? You're going to spend $400 on a weave and your children are eating top fucking ramen. Yes, where are the fathers? Where are they? No excuse. And that brings up another thing. We've got this COVID. This young black man has lost his uh, job at no fault of his own. He can't make his child support payment. Is any of you ladies going to step up and tell the child support system not to put him in the rears? I mean, he's giving you what he can. You know, now that he lost his job, you know he's not bringing any income in. But he's giving you $300, $400 versus the $500 he's supposed to give you. $550 here in California, that's the minimum. He's giving you $350. Are you guys going down to the child support office and say, don't put him in the rears? No, you're not. Wrecking this man's credit, this man's going to be fucked and he will never catch up. This is what we're talking about. We have to come together as a people. And I'm sorry you guys don't want to hear this, but it's just the truth. And the truth hurts sometimes. Am I perfect? No, but that's why I started this podcast called Unapologetic. You need to come on the show and say what you got to say and just be unapologetic about it. I, you know, I'm tired of being politically correct with these white race soldiers. And a lot of my friends are white race soldiers. I was in the military for a long time. A lot of my coworkers, I knew they were rednecks. But you know what? I'm not concerned about who they support. I have bigger fish to fry. That is their choice. If you want to be a Trump supporter, you go right ahead and be a Trump supporter. I've got bigger fish to fry because Donald Trump isn't going to be president forever. We got to keep our eye on the ball, people. We're not doing that. (sighs) But I'm Donovan Sadiq, you guys. I want you guys to check me out. I'm on the War Zone Monday through Friday on Facebook with the Five Star General and, of course, my partner in crime, Demetra K. And you guys know Demetra has her own show and we do the show on Sundays, 3 p.m. on Facebook Live, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Join us. Join us, join us, join us. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. Get out there. Get some sun if you need it. All you brothers sitting at home, got those teenagers. All you ladies that got your little kings at home sitting on their ass playing a PlayStation, get them up off their ass and get that list done. Get that grass cut. Get the shingle on the house fixed. Get a little paint thing going. Put them niggas to work. What's wrong with you ladies? But you want the man to do something you won't ask your own sons to do. Are y'all out y'all fucking mind? Wake up, black America. Hey, you guys. Just be safe out there. Pool your resources. If you don't have insurance on a loved one, you better get one. I'm Donovan Sadiq. See you guys next week.